ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I am hungry and it is time for a food deck night. I'm here with Dr. Leo. It's dinner time. Let's play some Legacy. Yeah, I done fucked up. I didn't eat before this, so I'm already a little bit hungry. Hey, we see here we got cephalid breakfast, a traditional English breakfast with, uh, or uh, I mean, um, you know, a squid based breakfast. This and uh, Doretti spaghetti. Hey, so I'm I'm ready for some good meal based decks. So that is our theme for tonight, everybody. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, this is our Tuesday night fight night where we will have some wild ideas come around from our mod team, from our from our wonderful general chat in our Discord, kind of trying out new ideas. New ideas. We do pre Innistrad legacy. We do mod nights where myself and Doc play each other, and other mods play each other. And tonight is a good one. We've got food based decks. Um, well, here's the problem. Tensai plays this list normally, and he rolls with it. Oh yeah, this is so, Tensai's main deck. This is his his main squeeze, and uh, yeah, this this might be a little bit one sided here. But to be fair, uh, Cliffy has been experimenting quite a bit with Painter, and I've actually played against a build that was very similar to this yesterday. Uh, shout out to Mox Human. Uh, we played an awesome game. Uh, it was a blue red Painter build that was used not Painter, sorry, Welder build that was using Welder to just basically reanimate big artifact creatures like sundering titan wormhole engine stuff like that and duretti spaghetti is pretty much just that uh, it's the duretti goblin welder goblin engineer her bringing back stuff and you know being really over costed artifact reanimator deck honestly i really like it it's a fun yeah, list and we're gonna get rolling here real quick cliff on the play here gonna go ancient tomb straight into a uh a looter scooter uh shout out to my friend looter and uh, cdh nexus and then we're gonna go to tensai who goes island right into the shuko one of the yeah. best cards in the list for that yeah, this card deck. sees no play outside of cephalid breakfast and it is one of the most important combo pieces in cephalid breakfast in fact it is the tutorable combo piece with the uh stoneforge mystic packet that uh, that's in the deck yeah, oh. For those of you who don't know, all you have to do is get a Shuko and a Cephala Illusionist, and that's pretty much game over at that point, because you just make infinite, infinite, infinite equip on equips. Yeah, and, and uh, importantly here, we are seeing that uh, this, is, this is where Cliff has their, their combo piece, which is the uh, Grindstone. Mm -hmm. No, not enough to activate, and really feels bad that there's nothing to crew the copter with to start getting that value engine going. But uh, I really do like that the grindstone is deployed here and did resolve. So it makes any painter or like really any welder or engineer a lethal threat. Yeah. And uh, Scornful Ego uh, Egotist, what we're basically saying is each deck has either a food style theme, food style name, basically anything you could bring to the kitchen table. So right now we have Cephalid Breakfast and then we have Doretti yeah. Spaghetti. Um, cards, decks that are basically named ideas, um, decks Legacy, that put some food, who knows? Legacy has a long-standing tradition of having uh, decks named after food. So you know, Cephalid Breakfast was one of the first to do this, as well as the fact that we have Strawberry Shortcake, which is the red, white painter list. We have things like Tricks. Which you will see later, possibly, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. I've heard a rumor uh, that there may be some trick for kids in this list. Uh, so we got tricks. We got, uh, what, let me think. I think there was another uh, another one during that era that was a uh, a combo deck, if I remember correctly. My brain is going blank, but if someone in chat can remember, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. This game is already going off wild. Uh, Cheerios. Cliff thinks, Cliff think, oh, Cheerios. Ah, uh, yes. Gotta love Cheerios. Uh, heart healthy. Um, Cliff off to a really good start here with Tensai kind of stumbling a little bit. The Stoneforge Mystic getting a GTA. No, I mean, there's a days to stop the engineer. But yeah, so well, when we got, uh, when we were talking about those lethal threats, having the fact that engineer can find the other half of the combo with painter. There and I do believe hey, that uh, Cliff has explained that there's an extra mana up floating. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so like the days would do nothing. So uh, they uh, the table spot since we're not an official tournament, the players allowed each other to rewind. The days goes back to hand. Cliff lets his goblin engineer resolve, grabs a painter, um, get, puts a painter into the bin, and we move on. But now 
Cliff gets the awesome understanding that Tensai has a uh, daze in hand. Yeah, and this is where the welder effects really come into play. Is allowing you to play around like counter magic and such like that. Mm -hmm. And now we see here the looter scooter being able to uh, uh, tap have, and actually attack, give you that loot effect so you can further hit uh, more reanimation targets or you'll be able to hit those land drops. Oh, ooh, what is that one? That is the ruin grinder. That is the ruin grinder. Uh, no, 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 that is triplicate titan. Uh, triplicate, triplicate titan. titan yeah. So nine for the nine nine flying vigilance trample. <laughs> whenever it dies, create a three three colorless golem creature token and a creature with, with artifact creature token with flying. A three three golem artifact creature token with vigilance and a three three with trample. I love this card. Triplicate titan is such a fun card. Um, it's actually uh, a pretty new card uh came out yeah. in commander 2021 uh really really cool card here basically it, as people are calling it it's the bigger worm coil engine um drop it for nine you get three three threes instead of the um the two three threes from worm coil engine um it basically is just a bigger worm coil engine yeah that that is that is wild uh i've never seen this before i didn't know that it existed and uh i kind of love this in this because you can just repeatedly weld it uh of course I don't think it's really castable with this deck, but like, awesome. I love this. Uh, no. This is a, a really cool effect. Absolutely not castable in a list like this. Maybe if we've got six or seven lands out there, um, but no, this is this is a brand new card that we're seeing for, uh, recently released this week, and that is a Cephalid Illusionist namesake of the deck. Yeah, and I think we might see here, yeah, this is infinite. So... Uh, what's happening here is Tensai now, oh, Cephalid, uh, Cephalid Illusionist says, uh, let me think. Oh, yeah. Whenever it becomes a target of spell or ability, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. So you keep repeatedly keep on targeting with Shuko and just untap, uh, you just keep on milling the top three. Eventually you hit your three Narc Amoebas, you dread return back your Thassa's Oracle, and boom, there you go. Bob's your uncle, you win the game. Welcome to one of the hardest combo decks to interrupt in Magic, I think, and also, unfortunately, piloted by one of the best pilots of the deck I've ever seen. Yeah, um, uh, Tensai is... Uh, I, I, I have never seen a Cephalid Breakfast pilot that is that proficient and that good at maneuvering around hate of all kinds. So it's really cool to see that, you know, a tr an old a traditional deck that was like from the old, old, uh, early days of Legacy is still viable today and the hands of a master still puts a great tournament results. So, I mean, that was uh, almost a five minute game one. So let's go ahead and jump right into the sideboards. Let's look at the winner here, uh, Cephalid Breakfast here. We've got two Angels Grace. I think we're going to bring the surgicals in with a goblin engineer package. Um, three swords to plowshares, one collective brutality, one grand abolisher, another copy of Thassa's Oracle, one plague engineer, two skyclave apparition, and two true name nemesis. I personally like the surgical to hit painter on the um, goblin engineer trigger. Um, what else are you liking here? Uh, I, I am liking the two surgical, honestly. That is that does feel really good here. Outside of that, I do like the one plague engineer because you put that on goblin and it kind of just stops uh, the most effective part of the deck. Uh, engineer does survive because it is a one two, but it completely negating the ma their majority of four ofs, which is the welder, is just really powerful. Yeah. It can just give you the time that you need. Uh, there's no like like. Uh, pithy needle effects, which I do love in these types of uh, decks, uh, to just shut down welder and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Uh, other than that, then you this is what makes Cephalid Breakfast so good is the fact that you can just pivot into a blue white stone blade shell. You can bring in your two true name nemesis, your two skyclave apparition, take out your combo, and then just absolutely murder people with the traditional blue white stone blade list. So then so, let's flip it straight over to Cliff here with Lion's Eye Diamond, Tormod's Crypt, another copy of Grindstone, three bolts, one needle, two surgical, one, and then basically a Karn, uh, Karn toolbox here of Liquid Metal Coating, Painter's Servant, and Snaring Bridge, Trinosphere, Microsynthesis, and then a one of of Magus of the Moon. What are you liking in this sideboard as well? Um, 
so there's a part of me that wants to bring in the Tormod script because of the fact that it is graveyard hate and that's important, but I mm -hmm. think it's more important that you have it off of a Karn <laughs> that you can get. Uh, therefore, you, you know, have like a dead draw in the case that Tensai has switched to the just blue white stone blade. Absolutely. Other than that, the safe bring ins are the two you know, surgical extraction and the one pithy needle. Uh, I don't know if I would bring lightning bolt to fight it on that access. That's uh, because trading one for one when your opponent can just like combo out all in one turn is like eh. but you a <laughs> lightning bolt can't a well time lightning bolt can disrupt it i just don't know yeah. if you uh, if you have the cuts for it yeah and cliff is a no mark on cliff cliff is an excellent pilot of whatever they play and being able to understand when the lightning bolt goes in i really do like the um uh, a card like uh pithy needle to name shuko it's a really good way to just kind of shut that deck off um and then, like I said, I also what, what are you hitting with the surgical? Like, what's what's your goal to hit there with the surgical? Uh, you hit the Narc Amoebas first because the Narc Amoebas, has, as soon as there's the first one into the bin, you oh, you put trigger on the stack, uh, surgical, yeah, uh, and you want to try and get rid of the Narc Amoebas whenever you can. Uh, if not, the next thing you want to hit is the Dread Return. And uh, preferably with the narco amoeba uh, triggers yeah. on the stack. Yeah, absolutely. So um, it's one of those things that uh, if you're going to bring in graveyard hate, you have to hit the right pieces. Um, yeah, it's it, it's one of those things. It's very hard to interact with at, at the right time because you really there's all sorts of triggers that happen and stuff like that. Yeah. So they're going to dive right back into the sea. Tensai is going to go down to six, and Cliff is going to keep seven, I believe. Cliff did see seven yeah. and kept seven. So we're going to see a Great Furnace right into um, a Goblin Welder, I think. Is that what we saw there? Yeah, it's a yeah and Tensai snapping off that Force of Will. I mean, a Welder is insane. So, I mean... Yeah, a Welder sets... Uh, because of the fact that this deck, uh, like the deck uh, that... Oh, no, it doesn't have... This one doesn't have... Uh, what's it called? Um... Uh, Faithless Looting. I thought uh, this deck would be on Faithless Looting. Doesn't look like it. It is not running Faithless Looting. We're, the only four spells we have in the list that are non-artifact or creature or uh, planeswalker are and just welders. four pyroblasts. We got four or well, there's four pyroblasts, which honestly, I like four pyroblasts in this list. Mm -hmm. I mean, in a mono red deck, why not play control? Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> of course, with a painter out, you can just pyroblast people's lands, stuff like that. Yep. So, oh. Either way, like Cliff does have answers to the combo main deck as well as the fact that, you know, Cliff can fight on a different angle. Mm -hmm. Like, but the thing is, I don't know who is favored in the long game here. I think Cliff is favored long game. I on like I believe the goblins just have more things to get in there with, um, mm -hmm. especially with four copies of Goblin Welder, and you somehow we already saw it. Gotta bring it up again. That amazing triplicate titan just sitting there, bring yeah, up a slam a nine nine. Honestly, Doretti scraps the bond. If you let that survive, it can just generate huge amounts of yep. values. It draws you cards. It, it is a reanimation effect. And its ultimate is game ending. Cool. Uh, alt my Doretti with a triplicate titan, just continuously keep killing it, making it bigger, killing it, making it bigger. Just keep yeah. bringing, make a just gigantic board of three threes and have a nine nine stick around as well. Sarah Bob, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like that's that's the whole reason why we're doing this is because of the fact that like we believe that like paper legacy is some of the best magic you can have. It's 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 one of those things that you can't really replace the feeling with legacy like MTO, especially with these Cobalt Therapy. I am one hundred percent naming Pyroblast here. Cliff hasn't played anything. Oh, Did he name oh, Bolt? Oh, no, oh, name's Karn the Great Creator. Creator. And he two kills. Two double. <laughs> Double. Oh, what a hit! What a better game hit! That's so nasty. Oh, oh that's I so love, sick. I love good, good hits. I love good Cabal Therapy hits. Nothing better. Man, that's so nasty. I mean, I know that's one of your favorite cards in Magic. That's oh, dude. You hit two of anything, even if you hit one. Sometimes on a blind name, it's a great feeling. But hitting two Karns in hand, oh, that's so brutal. Oh, two Karn uh, gone. That uh, that's also there's only one card in the great creator left in the deck. Yeah. Like oh yeah. Leaking two for one. That's a brutal two. For, imagine if uh, imagine if Tensai had a uh, a nomads in core on there or 
something yeah. like on the border. And that's not, it's not necessarily necessary right now for this game state and just wiped Cliff's hand. Yeah. Like that's how yeah. for that's such a I I hate cobalt therapy. It's so I mean, this, especially this you and your storm gate storm callers, but we'll talk about that <laughs> another time. Um <laughs> see, this is the reason why therapy is yeah, exactly. Blind therapies make you it would feel like you do have the biggest brain. So blind uh, when it comes to therapies, they are uh, that's the reason why it will never get printed into modern. Because of the fact that you can leverage your creatures effectively to sacrifice it, but you can also just completely turn the tide of a game with a single one drop spell. Like or that is know. just so good. I we've I, I hate thought seas. I play thought seas. I hate cabal therapy. I play cabal therapy. <laughs> I I think the card you play it beautifully where you have a card that doubles it and then you sack it to play it three times and just strip a hand, especially as a combo player. I hate it. Um but uh, no, I think that card will never, ever see modern play. But this is where we're playing Legacy, where you get to see basically every card that's ever printed, unless yeah, it's and, absolutely and, broken. And that's why uh, Legacy, I believe, is one of the best, uh, is the best format in Magic, is because of the fact that it gives you this creative side to play in, that you can just jam these games, that you can create these decks that really rely on these older cards to live like him to Turok, uh, Cabal Therapy you don't have any other er, uh, hand disruption in any other format that comes nearly as good as that yeah. and it just swings games completely and people think Thoughtseize is broken in modern imagine giving them a card like Cabal Therapy or um, yeah. him to Turok, no thank you I, as Did a modern imagine? player, no thank you could, could you imagine Cabal Therapy in some like historic with like Rakdos Arcanist running around oh stop um and to answer your question no cabal therapy has not been flashback yet that was a two for one with just hitting karn um, yeah felt real good yep and this is just another or the last therapy to just make sure the hand is clear uh uh no grok so grok uh grok cabal therapy says as uh uh a target player name a card so you name a card, and then that uh, that player reveals their hands, and for each copy of that card in their hand, they have to discard that. So you can cast Cabal Therapy with a single black man and say, a card in the Great Creator, creator. and if your opponent has two cards in the Great Creators in their hands, they have to discard both of them. That's so so because of that, uh, you can get massive two-for-ones and three-for-ones with the deck with a, a single Cabal Therapy. Yeah. So when you flash back Cabal Therapy, you can then guarantee a second hit because of that. And yeah. then if you want to have a really fun time, talk to me offline, join the Discord, <laughs> exclamation point Discord, and you can hear me rant about Seagate Storm Stormcaller plus Cabal Therapy, which is the greatest combination ever. Um, well, now the best thing is, is uh, yeah, no, uh, he bolted the Brazen Bar, uh, that's what it was. Uh, end step Brazen Borrower got bolted. That's where the bolt went. Um, oh yeah, the borrower, the borrower got ripped, uh, ripped apart with a port. Oh, the uh, the brainstorm, uh, brainstorm and swords, all those going to historic is wild and like. I have heard horror stories about what's happened in Historic. I know Pope's happy about it because, like, I think Phoenix is the best deck in Historic right now. I got Faithless Looting in Historic, baby. I'm good <laughs> to go. Sorry, <laughs> and, as many people do know that in the Discord, I have three favorite cards. One of them is Wheel of Fortune. The second one is Arclight Phoenix. I played Arclight Phoenix the day it was announced, the day the deck got built on MTG Top 8, and I played it for the entire 18 months that it was in Modern. I was sitting in uh, class when they banned it, and I literally left class because I was so pissed. <laughs> I was so I was sitting in oceanography. I was so angry when they pitched uh, when they banned Faithless Sitting because Faithless Sitting did nothing wrong. Um, paid for the sins of Urza. But so what we're seeing here though is what are you going to search for? This is the important part is, uh, do you go for the Cephalid Illusionist? I think you got to hit the Cephalid Illusionist. I absolutely believe with only seeing with a hard cast in Narcan, maybe you absolutely take the Illusionist because you know that Tensai is kind of stalling here. And, yeah. Uh, and that, I like how Tensai did this. Choosing the I like how Tensai player. responded. Um, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, choosing the flashback <laughs> off of the Illusionist because, I mean, if if you lose an Archimedes, jigs up. If you lose the Illusionist, uh, I think you can play around that. Is there any way to play around that? 
Uh, so. I mean, it's it's hard, but I also I, I have to give Tensai. Tensai, you're smarter than that. You did see the surgical, and then you did crack. You killed your own cephalopods to replay, and didn't name surgical. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I think I think this I think this might be GG's to the combo. So I really hope. Do we see? Do we see uh, it going into the fair? No, uh, no. I don't see. Uh, I don't see a true name nemesis. I didn't think they, that oh. would bring one in. I, my guessing, Ooh. my guess now is what happened. What we saw there, I saw four cards go into ten size list. I think we saw the surgicals. Yeah, I'm gonna guess a play engineer. My other thought was maybe a Thassa's Oracle as the fourth, and I think I, I saw. I, I think I, I, think I saw both copies in there. Yeah, yeah. So th we're on Shuko Narco beats. This is uh, we're we're in full garbage time. This is bad combo dot uh, dot deck bad hey. beats. Hey, Narco's a 2-1 right now. Dude, honestly, so fuck you, Darius. I love you with all my heart, but you beat me with uh, Hard Cash, Elvish Spirit Guys, and Vampiric uh, Hex Mages after I surgical to Dark Depths. And I, I lost. I lost hard. I could have a threat to save my life. There's a Duretti. Scrap Savant oh, coming to the battlefield there. Oh, game um, over. Fantastic. Fantastic. Already takes up by two, so... Um, yeah. Yeah, this should go in doing shit. Yeah, so most likely, uh, my guess is Cliff's going to uptick this, go to five, discard two, draw two. Um, <clears throat> oh, sorry, discard up to two, draw to up to that penny. Yeah, and that City of Traders ain't doing shit. You have so much land drops. Yeah. I mean, this is what, this is what happens. Sometimes you just get bad beats. I mean, narco. Like I said, narco's a two-one. So I mean, go to town, beat him up. I mean, the quite. Oh, <laughs> bye. Um, I love you, narco. I loved you. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I think this game might be going to Cliff here because Tensai has no more win conditions left. Um. Pitches a Cliff I might is it. two turns away from ult. Oh, sorry, no. Ult was at ten. So it says whenever you get you get an emblem with whenever an artifact is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, return that card to the battlefield in the beginning of the next end step. Yeah. So what you want to see here is a card like Triplicate Titan. Go to the bin, or you weld the Triplicate Titan, and then you putting it back. You weld the Triplicate Titan. You build the, You bring it back. Yeah, well, and, triple, and you yeah, just make a board of three threes. Oh, that's disgusting. Yeah, this is what we said. I think, like I said, I think Cliff just gets there in the long game. Tensei has to win this game with before turn four, basically, or Cliff can just slowly Ooh. bring the game back. No, no, I was thinking, okay, so there's no way if Cliff mills Tensei, he can't, like, he can't win off of that because uh, Dreader turns to sorcery and stuff like that, so. Yeah. Uh, no, there, there is no fear of of decking Tensai right now with the grindstone. Um, there's no way to bounce back out of this unless, because no, yeah, there's no way to bounce out of that. Uh, that being You're said, absolutely right, Oliver. Uh, this is this is where we're gonna see if Tensai can hit anything to keep a alive because Cliff has win on the next turn by using uh, the Dreddy minus to get back that grindstone. So Tensai's got to find something here in the form of either like a surgical, a, I think surgical is the only thing that does it. I mean, yeah. I mean, the, th the card that is good right now would absolutely be surgical, but like I said, yeah. Tensai has to have it in hand. Um, Tensai is, uh, sorry, there's, they're taking a second at the table here. Um, Tensai is reading all of Doretti's scraps of to make sure that he fully understands the card. Shout out to our wonderful table spotter, Prez, who is helping them out table side. Um, but yeah, uh, the negative two here just bring back, uh, bring back a scrap. I mean a grindstone, and uh, okay, that's another couple of hits. Yeah, ten sides gonna brainstorm his upkeep. No, that was uh, that was brainstorm main phase because he he drew first. I think he uh, drew yeah. the, the brainstorm for turn. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, so. Yeah, outside of surgical, I think that's literally the only card to keep. Yeah, that's not going to do anything. No, Stoneforge doesn't do it. 
no offense, a damn thing right now. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could get a you could get a batter skull. Sure. We're gonna get a GTA. GTA. Hey, I'm gonna guess we're gonna build a Stoneforge Mystic here. I think we're just gonna build up a Stoneforge Mystic. It does nothing. It does uh, nothing, unfortunately, right now. Cliff uh, Cliff is stealing this game, and I think uh, sending that uh, that uh, what's it called? Oh, the Cephalid Illusionist to the graveyard was that that was the mistake. Yeah, because Cliff just uh, gets rid of the Lotus Petal for the uh, Grindstone and kills him. Um, to fairy plus uh with a reanimate would uh, win though with the Thassa's Oracle. Boom. There is the possibility that Angel's Grace did get brought in, but I doubt it. Ooh, I ooh. I, I mean, what do you bring in Angel's Grace is against Storm? Control, maybe. You try to go off Thassa's Oracle. You have no library. You have Angel's Grace to not die. Um, I think, I think it's got to be a, like a faster storm or something like that. Cliff's, because, but since I stepped out, yeah, this this game uh, this game's over. Cliff just has to go and just activate the ready. Yeah, activate the ready. The card comes down because yeah, the grindstone just comes down. No, uh, Astrid, it's um. Not an Oracle Mirror or Ten Size on uh, Cephalid Breakfast, but Cliff's just on Painter or well, Dreddy Spaghetti. It's a Ready Spaghetti with a what gigantic you... nine nine. Oh, and there's the nine nine. Plus? There's the nine nine. He plus to Ready. What are you? What are you doing, dude? I think he just maybe wants to win with the nine nine on Cam. I, honestly, probably the nine. Oh, there's a Smuggler's Copter. Oh, Oracle Mirrors. Okay, I got gotcha. you. What the f engineer? What are we putting in with an engineer? Uh, I Grok, we're asking the same question. Um, honestly. And Angel's Grace and Upkeep does save ten seconds, and then you can just yeah. hard cast a Thassa's Oracle, if he has Thassa's Oracle in hand, he just wins the game, which also could be what Cliff is, that, I mean, Cliff is asking a ton of questions about Angel's Grace because if he has Thassa's Oracle in hand and he mills him, Angel's Grace is in his upkeep so he doesn't lose just cast Thassa's Oracle and wins the game uh, yeah, no now, I mean, it's a big if, you have to make him have it I, we're talking about a huge if here and you're talking about an if that also loses the Pyroblast yeah, but also we're getting wonderful as we have our basically a third commentator with Prez. Uh, and, uh, also mills on the narcos and dread return is on turns on. Been sundering Titan and past. Jesus Christ! Oh my God! So much power in the bin. Oh, uh, that sundering Titan's gonna be brutal. I think we're gonna see some down ticks, or we're gonna start seeing swing the vial and swing the GT. I mean, swing the GTA Shuko Stone Forge Mystic. We're just gonna block a shit ton. Cruise yeah, the block. copter. Yeah. Blocks. <sighs> Copters are three three. Draw discard. Uh, Karn. Okay. Kills the engineer, which I I, I can I could see the engineer going that's down. Fine. That's absolutely fine. Um, still like going for the win here. Like, yeah, I, I I I don't know what Cliff is. I mean, we honestly know what Cliff is scared of. Um, so we're gonna see the downtick, crack the pedal, grab my nine nine boy. Where's where's he? Yeah. Are we doing Sundering Titan? We go full uh full lulls. Nine nine or an eight eight. Oh, we go the eight eight. Okay, that's fine. The seven ten. Sorry, the seven ten. Oh. oh. Okay. Uh, big body. Okay, so we got here Sundering Titan, and you're gonna be able to hit three lands off of ten size side easy. Four. As. Oh. Oh, okay. So Tenzai just scoops it up. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yep. Oh, and, and Cliff shows the worm coil engine that could easily hard gas. Yeah. Wow. Established right. dominance. Yeah. I don't need to kill you with grindstone. I'm just gonna just smash your face with uh sundry titan. I mean, that's what you do. Just put it on the table and just just laugh. Yep. Just establish the dominance. That's okay. So uh going to game three. And honestly, uh I think Tensai hey, killed himself on that one. I yeah. think I think you could have played uh, played around and waited to hit the surgical that was in hand because it was it was known information because the longer that yeah. that card just like rots in hand and like the better so and then if they blow it on your cabal therapies you're happy because you're just gonna win anyways so I think that was ten size game to lose and yeah uh, absolutely that misplay was that misplay was brutal with sacking the illusionist and then getting yeah. it surgical I uh, um, I have. I've been a very big proponent of this and, and saying that, you know, sometimes you just got to leave the therapy in the bin. Like the amount of times that uh, just having a backup therapy in the bin to hit something that's known and important to you is, is just going to be huge. Like just leave it in there because it's a constant threat that your opponent will eventually forget about. And then when they, for they forget about it and get complacent, you can just strip their hand. Absolutely. Um, also, I'm pretty sure there was an Archimedes on board. Why not just hit, why not just because stack them? Because if you start to sacrifice the Narc Amoeba and they surgical the Narc Amoebas, you lose your combo. Yeah, it was so it was just way, a bad it was just bad on each side. Um, yeah, either way, you can't do it. So and I understand Tensai's thinking of like shit, there's a surgical in hand, I need to get rid of that. You have time to draw out. Uh, yeah. there was no pressure on the board. This was before there was any uh, the ready had even come down. So you had time to just sit there until you could just eventually top deck a, a uh, something that doesn't matter. Something like a, a uh, Stoneforge Mystic. Absolutely. It was, that. it was an unfortunate misplay that bit Tensai in the butt. But yeah, but we have seen Tensai play this deck numerous times before. And Tensai is now on the play exactly where a combo player wants to be. Yeah, and we're also talking about like two very good players because both of these players are actually going to be playing in our Invitational this weekend, this Saturday. After three months of grinding, we have our eight top players from the Discord. And, I mean, it was a fierce season. There was a huge race at the very end there this season. And I'm super excited about it. It's a great time. Uh, our Invitational is always the best time. It's a double elimination tournament. We stream it all day. Uh, like... Like the community really comes out for it, and each of these players can win and a play set of our tokens, and that we're also debuting our new tokens. So you know, yeah. it's a it's a you guys don't you guys are so we're so excited to bring you guys the next token. We're so excited. Yeah. For those of you, uh, for those yeah, of you who I are here in our chat, hint. it is a green one drop. It is a green one drop. It, we will give you that hint. So for those of you who have not seen them, uh, we have our first two from the season. For the first two seasons, we have our wonderful, that's the wrong, wonderful brainstorm that yep. uh, Doc's girlfriend, Alba, wonderfully created here. Um, beautiful, beautiful art. These are in foil. Um, so, and I have mine signed. Um, and then we have also, for season two, we had our dark ritual. Um, yes. So we are, um, we are moving through. We're not telling you guys what it is, but we will say that it is a green one drop. But, you know, there's a yeah. lot of green one drops. There's so, a lot of honestly, there's a lot of green uh, good one drops, and we got exploration, veteran explorer, uh, veteran explorer, still veteran explorer, and I suppose uh, like there's some other veil, veil. Rotation. There's a whole bunch of good ones out there. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, we got worldly tutor, worldly tutor, carpet of flowers. Carpet of flowers. Um, uh, so Deacon, if you want to uh, claim a dark Dante, one, you know where place. to find me, bro. Dante, get in this server, play some Legacy. If you keep playing, I'll find a way to get you some, Dante. D. Kronke, my boy, I've known this man for almost 12 years now. Um, get in here and play some Legacy. Dude, honestly, it, it's a good time. And with our uh, expansion of our tournament series, uh, our EU tournaments, and then going forward, like, I, I'm really happy to see like how the Discord has grown in the best kind of way for a lot of players. So... Yeah, so actually, I'm gonna go ahead and announce it. It's actually Brown Oof. That's that's the that yes. is, that oh. is the next card. That is the next yeah. MTG Legacy token here. 
Uh, Holy moly, what a turn one from Cliff. <laughs> well, turn one <laughs> from hands, turn, uh, and also shut down your combo. That's so nasty. That that's that's not the worst. No, and also playing Tensaigo, Tensaigo, you see Shuko and you go, cool, great for his uh pithy needle, your turn. Yep. We are 100 percent proxy friendly as long 100%. as they are in color, in color, yeah. and they are yeah. cards that have been printed not in MTGO but in full paper sets. You are yes. welcome to play anything proxy, please. Yep. That is something a, you know that you know that that is a that's a big thing for me personally because when i when i came up through as a legacy player i started really seriously when i was in grad school where i didn't have money i didn't have anything to spend i'm so poor oh yeah <laughs> and uh it's one of those things like i i had some commander decks and i sold also oh, off some collections and some older cards and bought into like the cheaper stuff and then eventually just got to the point that i also had some very good friends who made some very good trades for me and i really appreciate him still to this day and honestly it took me a while to build my first deck but once i did i was so happy and it's it's an addicting thing to play this format and uh like honestly it's it's my favorite thing to do for my spare time like i played a game earlier during my lunch hour because i was like i got some time can we talk about what's happening on cliff's board double painter swinging with a painter um, the painter beats I do believe is the time uh, term. Yeah, I mean, I'll ask Prez. Hey, Prez, is it? Are we on Painter Beats? See if he shows up in chat for a second. Um, and Scornful, you can definitely proxy any of my lists anytime. I love sharing my lists. Uh, I build bad decks, but man, are they fun! Like yeah. Swords, one of the painters goes up back to twenty four. Cliff twenty one for Cliff. Um. I like where this is in the fact that like Cliff has pretty much uh, established that there's no way that any of the dazes or anything like that are going to convert in this. And I've liked that they had Cliff has continuously demonstrated to say, Hey, it's a possibility that I have pyroblasts here and threatening that pyroblast is the important part. Yeah, absolutely. Whoa. Oh. Value Thoracle, my favorite commander. When you have to you read the rest of the card, see that when you you only see that in uh, Commander, the value when, or when when you sit there and you go, what the hell the rest of this card do? It doesn't because it usually just says I win, but now I have to read what the other half that card says. Yeah, I still don't know. I just know that it says I win when I don't have a deck. Yeah, I win if I have no cards. So basically, you get to choose up to one. You get to look at the top number of cards in your uh, library with your devotion to blue, um, and you get to put up to one on top of your library, or you can put none. Um, up to yeah. I, I, I mean, it is it is good, well, especially since it is basically a impulse on a body, uh, and that's not the worst. Like that's not the worst feeling, but especially since this list does bring in a second oracle, so you oh, you can do your uh, what's it called? Um, see Nomads and course slammed on Tensei's side of the board. Yeah, and this is the other half of the possible combo with Nomad's Encore being able to uh, pay zero to redirect one damage from a tar to a creature you control. So you can just do that for infinite amount of times. Um, oh, but no, we just see Grindstone. Do we have a Force Will? I don't think Tensei has it in hand. I would be really surprised that Tensei has it in hand. They'd be empty-handed with a Force. I think... Grindstones. There's no way to quick uh, to quicken like dread return or anything like that. No. So that that would be a play. That would be Tensai a really cool deep play. Deep in the tank. Wait, isn't there a spell that's it's called quicken or something like that where you uh, you can oh oh and ended with the force force oh. pitching the illusionist that's so brutal. If you're Cliff, you take that trade every day. Ooh, that means that Tensai had the win on the uh, the opposite turn, but was forced to get rid of it. Oh, that feels bad. Okay, so there's two more targets left in the deck. Yeah, that's that's brutal. But good for Tensai. Fortunately, uh, Cephalid is in exile, not in the graveyard, so no surgical target right now. Yeah, 
Uh, I'm surprised that like, uh, what's it called? Oh, that 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 isn't some tech that like Cephalo Illusionist players don't use that as some tech. What like to force uh, pitch to, to, quicken, uh, to, uh, to quicken, uh, quicken to quicken a dread return against like painter and stuff like that. Well, you know where we'll discuss that, Doc, on the MTG Paper Legacy Discord later this after, yeah. later this evening because I'm gonna ask. Yeah, I mean that that's that's some tech. Like that is a way to like take advantage of that. that I can't I'm really sure. Enjoy. With how long ten sides have played this, there's been at least one copy of Quicken somewhere in this list. I would assume. Oh, because it also draws. <laughs> oh, never mind. Oh, never mind. I didn't even think about never that. Never mind. Did not think about that. <laughs> never mind. Also, we just lost ten size feed. We will get that back to you right then and there. Uh, <laughs> I Quicken just throw. realized I said draw a card at the end. Oh yeah, though it had flash. Draw a card. Don't mind us, guys. We're dumb. We just cast Legacy, so don't mind us. Yeah, yeah. We're just watching no, it happen. That's a Sundering that Titan. Is that a hard cast, Sundering Titan? Yes, it is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, so, my gosh. Tra yeah. City Traders, two Lotus Petals, a Mountain, four, mount four Mountains. Two Great Furnace, two Mountains. Ooh. Brainstorm is triple bed. That is just brutal. That that's insane. Yeah, that's and of course now you also have a seven ten on the board that is essentially an abyss. Tensai and... openly concedes. Tensai goes down on stream to spaghetti. Wow, I did not see it going that way. What the fuck's Look, going earlier, on? I was talking with Cliff. <laughs> It was going, and I was like, I don't know. I'm going to lose so hard, but like, wow. Uh, I mean, to be fair, Sundering Titan against a three color base deck is always going to be good. Yeah, and, absolutely. And uh, Cliff has played Tensai way too many times to count. So yeah, exactly. you got to get one. You got to get one. And but also, Cliff played that second game so brilliantly. And just that, pithy needle, that pithy needle saved the game. That pithy, that pithy needle, needle was brutal. The Pithy Needle was everything. Because completely shut down the combo, and then the fact that Tensei was forced to pitch the Cephalo Illusionist, whoo, just, just enough time. Like, Cliff playing by the skin of his teeth on that one. So, we are going to take a short break and get our second round set up uh, for everybody. So, stick around, and we'll be right back. All right, guys.